All right, here's my very unofficial, very imperfect video about Rod and Staff math. It's milestonebooks.com. This is what I've been telling my friends about for a couple of years, saying throw your flashcards away. Use this as your supplemental math program to teach math facts. I actually use a more colorful um, math program for one of my kids that I ended up getting all my kids on. But I noticed the math facts go so quickly, and the teacher's guide will say things like, you know, practice the sixes, and they should be learning them, they should know the twelves fluently by now. And I'm like, yeah, that's not happening. I need something I can load up in their binder that they can practice without me. Um, and this is amazing because it will have, like, for example, I just want to show you right off the bat. Um, this is the 10 minuses, and it's a whole page of 10 minuses, okay? And then the next page is, this one actually moves faster than it normally does, tens with a little bit of review, another page of tens and a little bit of review, just page after page after page. The kids never feel the pain. They never even feel the burn, I'm telling you. It's like so gentle and tiny increments, um, and which is what I love about it, and people say it's, a weakness of the program they say oh it's too slow it's outdated um, whatever and that's but that's what I like about it because who cares what first second third grade means use it whenever you want to use it review it use it as a tool to review at any time whatever but it has worked for me I want to walk you through it um, because that small incremental um, uh, method you just saw is true of all three grade levels now this first book um, workbook one, workbook one, I just had to like literally create it like a dummy, uh, covers the math facts one through five because I've already used that one, um, or I don't know where it is. Workbook two is six through ten. So this year, there's only two workbooks. They're really cheap, five bucks. This one might be more than five bucks, but there's no color. It's really cheap. Um, the second grade year, there's five of them, which happens a lot with Rod and Steph. Sometimes there's five. Uh, let me see if I can see Unit 2, Unit 3, Unit 4, and where is Unit 5? It's missing. Here it is on the floor. Those are like literally like three bucks a piece. Here's Unit 5. Ah, I just bent it. But that's okay because you know what? These are going to get ripped apart in a minute. And I punch holes in them. This is literally what I do all the time. They're so pretty. Yeah, well, too bad. They're getting ripped apart. So, but... um. And then the third grade year, it's just one hard book, not the workbooks. And so you do have to have your kids get a template of some kind or um, use notebook paper. And it also has those perfect, small, ridiculous increments where the kids are almost bored. It's so easy. You can blow through like five pages a day. So, um, okay, let's go through the first one. The first grade they use the houses okay now if the houses make you crazy I happen to grow I grew up learning about the houses I that's how I learned them um, I learned with number street hi Miss Cargill literally I use the method I learned from Miss Cargill so I like the houses if you hate the houses whatever I'm gonna save that if you want to learn about the house method that I use I'll tell you at the end of the video but it's like so not important right now that's for later um, second grade there's a whole book on the 11s and I'm going to show you how slow it is. Oops, I forgot. I've already ripped this book apart. This is the Unit 1 book. Does They do stop to review 1 through 10s. You know what? Half the time, I don't even use this book. I skip it. If you kids really know the 1 through 10s, plus and minus, or addition and <coughs> subtraction, you don't even need to review it. Um, they leave the houses, and they use this sort of method where it starts off in each week or each, you know, they add another layer. And they use little sailboats. The cell boat. One and six, six and one, two and five, five and two, and four and three. But I don't like this as much as the houses. It is what it is. It's just another method. Maybe you like this better than the houses. I don't know. But then unit two in the second grade year, this whole book is the elevens. I've already thrown this one torn this one apart too. It's not available. Um, I call this gentle math. That's what the kids call it. Uh did my gentle math. Okay, so let me show you using this one. This whole book is the 12s and 13s. Are you kidding me? That's a lot. First pages, let's see, is this the first page? Okay, look how long we're gonna spend on nine, three, and 12. 12 is made of nine and three. Nine and three are the four math facts in the fact family. They write them here. Okay, look at this, a whole page of 12, nine, and three. 12, nine, and three, forever and ever and ever. Oh, we're gonna do that again. We're gonna do it again. And actually, this go to 12 minus 3, 12 
12 minus 9, 12 minus 3. Helps them to see these numbers as not scary because that's just 12 minus 3. 12 and 3 and 9. Another page of 12 and 3, 9. We're still on 3 and 9 and 12. We're still on 9, 3 and 12. We're still on it. We're still on it. We're starting to have a little bit of review in there from the, the tens. We're still on it. And now I'm on page 27, and I'm just now starting my next 12 fact family, 8, 4, and 12. So you can see it just takes forever. I mean, you can skip some of that. I definitely skip all of this stuff. I just use the math back pages. And think about, they've done this, it's so slow. They're just going through four, eight, 12, four, eight, 12, so fast and so gently that they're not stressed out. It's like, this is easy. They've never complained once. They've never been like, real. I mean, of course, you hit them for, you say we're doing four pages a day. They're gonna say, oh, four pages. But once they get going and realize how simple it is and easy and the repetition, repetition, repetition is how they learn it. Then unit four is the 14s and 15s, and then unit five is the 16s and 17s. My baby just woke up. Can someone go get her? Thanks. And of course, the last 18s, the last or highest integer is nine, so nine plus nine is 18, so that's pretty much uh, the, the end of it, at the end of this book. All right, then let's do the multiplication. Now, the third grade year, well, it's, they call their third grade year, it's, you know, you can start this in second grade or whenever whenever your math program starts multiplication. The first part of this book, I've always skipped it because it does review multiple, I mean, addition and subtraction. But when you start the multiplication, let's see, I wish I had this bookmarked. I'm sorry about that. This is the threes, and they have a whole page of threes. And then the next page of just times threes. I don't even do the rest of this. I just use this for my multiplication facts, so I don't have to use flashcards. Another page of threes and twos and ones. Threes and twos and ones. Threes and twos and ones. The page, threes and twos. I mean, page after page after page. How many, I mean, literally, how many pages of that is of threes and twos and ones? Are we on page five or six before the fours come in? And so I ended up just writing in my book the answers and then for that first page has the answers for them to, and they can flip back to it if they want. For the answers i don't have to touch a flash card done so just real quick i'm going to show you the house method to make um miss cargill famous just kidding i literally i the reason i'm doing this i researched she called it number street i researched number street i googled it i was like where can i find a video of number street i want my kids to learn it number street style i'm literally gonna i'm such a dork watch this where's my thing at i'm gonna write Number Street, because that's what Miss Cargill called it. So that's what I'm going to call it, you know? And you can have the kids, like, put their hands on it. They put these one hand here and one hand here, or she's up in front of us. I wish I had a thing to hold my thing. Hold a thing for my thing. A thing for my phone. Zero, eight. To make the eights, let's go zero, eight, one, and seven, two, six, three, five, and four, and four. One, zero, eight, one, seven, two, six, three, five, four, and four. Three and five go together, two and six, you know, that kind of thing. And then when they see it on here, I actually pulled one, didn't I? Did I, did I, did I? I thought I did. I did pull one. It's like this is the eights. So let's do the plus. I think I have a plus one. Here's a plus one of the eights. Please forgive me if you're like nauseated right now. Like, really, is she trying to teach me math? <laughs> Believe me, I realize I'm just showing you how I teach my kids. Um, zero and eight go together. One and seven, two, six, three, five, and four, four. So the one and the seven go together. So one and seven, one and seven. Two and six, so the, the six and the two go together. Six and two. The three and five, the five goes with the three. You know, where you're filling them out, you're kind of just showing them a puzzle. You're not worrying about the math facts in the beginning. You're just teaching them kind of the uh, the puzzle of it. You know, I can't believe I'm actually going to do this, but I don't have to. I did not actually plan to do this, but the seven goes with the one. The six goes with the two. The two goes with the six. The three and five go together. And I literally just kind of piece it together like that. And then we're like, oh, yeah, they all get plus signs. 
I mean, it's very, you know, I fill it out for them the first time and then they start going, ooh, I want to do that. Or they like to just say, ooh, let me just go. They learn that it's like, oh, zero, one, two, three. I told you this wrong, didn't I? One. What's wrong with me? Oh, I forgot zero. One. Oops. You can't have eight minus nine. Look at this. Y'all, I just failed. Okay, mama failed. It's okay. Speaking of fail, you want to see what my life really looks like? Like if I zoom out. Ah, uh, no. Let's don't zoom out. But anyway, just so you can see the real life. That fill it out, show them the puzzle of it, and just over time, over time, over time, they make a thing, the, the connections. But this has saved my life. I stop it after third grade, because after that, they go into other stuff. And once they've learned those math facts by fourth grade, they should be good to go. They should just get faster at them and maybe go higher, maybe go up to 15s, like we do with classical conversations. But, um... Anyway, hope that helps. Bye.